Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 19 about creating a game in HTML5. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this episode, what we'll be doing is improving the map system and the bullet collision system. Okay, so for the map, we have one important decision to take. Do we want our game to have multiple maps or only one map? Because the way we'll code it will be very different depending what we choose. Um, so for this video series, I will assume that we want to have multiple maps. So the code will be a little bit more complex, but overall, it will do exactly the same thing. So what we will want to do is to create a new constructor for our um, game. And it will be called, normally, the name would be map. Unfortunately, the name is already taken by JavaScript itself. So we cannot use map. It's kind of like array. We cannot use array or we cannot have a class called function because function is a keyword. So instead we will now name it maps and this will be our new constructor. So what we will need for the map is basically, I don't know, an ID for the map. Then we will need a, an image. Now we don't really want to put an image directly. It will simply be the image source. And then you'll see, it will be better when it's done. So that will be the, the self. Whoops. So with an ID, with an image. So the image by default will be just the empty image. And then we will use the source to actually put something inside it. There we go. There we go. Now we already have a draw image function right there. So we will be reusing that thing. Put it right here. So it will be the self draw that will be equal to that. And here instead of, let's finish that right here. So if you remember correctly, when we have created a new image, then we simply do image.source and then we can specify um, the source of the image. That's exactly what we do here. We say, hey, the map is a new image, map.source equal that. So that will be um, the thing that will be needed here. So eventually we will have something like that. So current map equal um, maps with an ID, let's say, I don't know, field. That will be the image source. Now for the width, it will be that and for the height, it will be this. So now let's do a couple changes with um, the new, new stuff. So this becomes that. And finally, this, there we go. So that the draw function should work. So now one thing we need to change is in the update loop, we say, hey, draw the map. Now it's no longer that, it's current map, draw. There we go. And, and we need to return self. Now, do we need to add anything else for the map to work? I don't think so. So let's just save and check if it works. So as you can see, things still works as planned. Now there's one big thing that we still have a problem with is that we cannot go um, farther than the width of the Canva because we don't have a distinction between the width of the Canva and the width of the map. So that will, I wouldn't say it will take some time to fix. It shouldn't be that long. We just need to check whenever we use um, width. So we use it here. So that makes sense because we clear the Canva, we need to use the, the Canva width. Now for drawing self, this also works. It's for the collision. So right here, when we draw self, that works. Okay, right there. Update the position, now it will be current map dot width. So this is the new maximum for updating the position. And for the height, it will be current map dot height. Then right here, we will do exactly the, oops, the same thing. There we go. And yeah, another thing is when we randomly generate an enemy, we don't want it to only be um, within the canvas size, we want it to be anywhere within the, the map. So, and I think the same goes for the upgrades. There we go. 
So let's just save and test this out. Okay, so now as you can see, we can go as far as we want and when we will actually reach the um, map with an eye, we will actually stop. So everything is perfect so far. Now the other thing I want to change with the current system is to actually put a um, collision system for the bullets. Right now the bullets have no collision, we removed that because it was causing all sorts of problems. Now one very important thing to understand is that there are two types of bullets. There are bullets that hit enemies and there are bullets that hit the players. We cannot just assume that they are all the same thing because the, the collision will not work. So what we are going to do is um, for our bullets we will add a new parameter to them and it will be the combat type. So who actually shot the bullet? So let's add it right here. So combat type and so combat type. There we go. So we added this here and when we will generate a bullet we have access to the actor who shot the bullet. And what we are going to do is right here we are going to add the actor type which can be either player or enemy. So by adding this there we will be able to access who actually shot the bullet and this obviously will be used for on the collision system. So if we go right here what we do right now is that for every bullet in our list of bullets we update them and then we update the timer then we test the collision with the enemy. So we'll loop through every enemy and then we do some kind of logic. Now it will be a little bit different. So if um, one little thing I'm going to do is to rename a bullet list key. It's kind of long, so I'm just going to rename it to um, B. It will be easier that way. So let's just select all that B. There we go. So if the B combat type is the player, so um, bullet was shot by player, what we want to do is to actually do what we were doing before. We we'll loop through every enemy. If there's a collision right here, um, so if there's a collision with one of the enemy, we set A, the bullet needs to be removed, and then we delete the enemy. So that works. Now we will do another um, condition if the type of the bullet um, was enemy. This means we want to hit the player. So what we are going to do is if the bullet collision with the player we are going to reduce the player HP so player HP minus equal one so reduce by one and then to remove becomes true so the bullet disappears right after that um, there was also another thing I wanted to change and it's the collision between enemies and player right now we look through every enemy and if the enemy is colliding with the player, we reduce the player health, we will no longer be doing that. So the only way for the player to lose health is if a bullet touch him, not if the enemy touch him. Okay, so now let's just take a look at what we have done. So here we are, there's a player. If I touch a bullet shot by a bat, I lose HP. If I shoot a bullet and it touch a bat, the bat dies. But if I touch a bullet that I personally shot, nothing happens. So everything is working correctly. Now one little problem we have right now is that the aiming is entirely wrong and that's because of the way we um, handle the aiming angle. So let's just take a look. So if we go right here in the on mouse move, right now what we do is that we do the mouse X minus equal the player X. This was back when the player was moving and the map was still. So we need to change that for the width divided by two. So the, the position where the the player is drawn. So there we go. And now the, the aiming should work correctly. Yep, there we go. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And in the next video, what we will be doing is revamping the um, enemy AI. So right now they just move around randomly and they shoot at angle zero. So what I'm going to do is that they will actually try to chase the player and they will always shoot towards the player. So it will be a lot of fun to do. So thanks again for watching and see ya.